Hello and welcome to Digital Goulash. My name is Chucky and today we're going to take Photoshop Elements 10 and we're going to make some of those crazy soap bubbles that we always see and love to blow. Let's go ahead and take a look how I did that. Here is the layers palette right there and as you can see I have a couple sets of layers that I put the little soap bubbles on and then I have some little effects over here. I want to thank Peter Busey over at the Creative Commons Flickr license for letting me use this photo under the Creative Commons licensing terms. I'm going to go ahead and go to edit and I'm going to revert this to my original photo there and I'm going to take away those bubbles. Now the first thing that I would like to do is I'd like to go ahead and do the infamous command or control J depending on if you have a Mac or PC. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a transparent layer by going into the layers palette and hitting this dog ear icon right there. So there we go. Now I'm going to go to the rectangular marquee tool right there. As you can tell, I have the elliptical marquee tool and it's kind of hiding underneath the elliptical marquee and there's the rectangular marquee tool. Now the trick to doing this if you want to create a perfect square is hold down the shift key. So what I'm going to do is hold down the shift key and I'm going to make a nice square about the size of the bubble. And there we go. There it is. Now, make sure that you have the default colors in your foreground and background by hitting the D on the keyboard. That'll put black in the foreground and white in the background. Now what we're going to do is we're going to hit the X. So what I'm doing is I'm teaching you a few of the keyboard shortcuts. D puts the default black and white in here, and then X switches those around so that the black is in the background. Now, the quick keyboard shortcut for filling this is Command-Delete or if you're on a PC it is control backspace. Now that fills this with black. Now the next thing we need to do here is we need to go over to our filter and we're going to add a rendered lens flare. Lens flares are a lot of fun right there. And as you can see it's a real pretty lens flare there. I'm just going to leave it at 50 to 300 zoom. and I'm going to select OK right there. And that's kind of a cool looking thing. The only thing is, is it does not look like a little bubble there. So we're going to use one of our filters again. We're going to go to filter and we're going to hit distort and we're going to choose the one that says polar coordinates. And what that's supposed to do is it's supposed to take the coordinates in a polar configuration kind of make it round looking. So let's go ahead and do that and you can see that it's starting to get this really nice looking effect. Make sure that you are on rectangular to polar. And there we go. So it's kind of a nice looking effect right there. The only problem is is that this isn't bright enough yet. So I'm going to make a duplicate of this in just a minute. Now hit Command D to make the marching ants go away. Now we're going to go back to the elliptical marquee tool and what we need to do is we need to make a perfect circle right there and we need to get rid of the square that we see. So hold down your Alt or Option key and hold down your Shift key and put that baby right in the center right there and drag outwards. And as you can see, I'm making a real nice circle right there. Make the circle and make sure that you're inside the black area. If you go outside the black area a little bit, remember that you can always use your arrow keys to kind of center that back up again. Now, if I hit the Delete key now, it's going to delete everything on the inside and that's not what we want. So I'm going to hit Command or Control Z. We want to delete everything that's on the outside of this. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit Command Shift I or if you're a, a menu person you go to select inverse right there. So Command Shift I and we're going to hit delete and there we go. We have created a nice circle here. Hit Command D to get rid of those nasty ants again and there is our nice circle. Now the one thing that you want to do is you want to take this reflection right there and you want to put it kind of up on either the top left or in this case the sun is almost coming from the right so you want to take that around and move it to the top right. So if you hit command T or the transform and drag the little cursor towards the corner you notice that there's the little rounded arrows and just move that around until you get something like this. Now when you're happy with that, hit enter and there you have it. Now that still doesn't look like a bubble, but we're going to make it look like it. Let's go ahead and go to the layers palette and we're going to change our blending mode. We're going to choose linear dodge right there. And it's starting to look pretty nice right in here. You still can't see it too well, but it's starting to look pretty nice. Hit command J 
and then as you can see it's starting to get that nice bubble looking effect to it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to hit command and then I'm going to click on the very top layer right there. And what we need to do is we need to go under the enhance and we need to give it kind of a pink or a green hue. If you notice that those bubbles are usually pink, green, or blue. So we're going to adjust the color. We're going to go to adjust hue and saturation. And then we're going to make sure that the colorize box is ticked right there. And then we're going to slide it on over to the right a little bit. Now on this one I'm going to make this one kind of pinker. So I'm going to do that, and I want to make it a little bit more on the saturation, kind of give it that nice pinkish, yellowish, greenish look. And then the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a little bit of brightness to where you can almost see the edges, which is right about there. And then I'm going to select OK. So that's starting to look pretty nice right in there. If we click on the layer 2, which is right here, we're going to do the same thing, except this time we're going to choose a little bit different color. I'm going to go to Enhance, Adjust Color, Adjust Hue and Saturation. I'm going to do it again, and I'm going to click the uh, Colorize tick box right there. But this time I'm going to come over and I'm going to pick a little bit different color with green. I'm going to saturate that just a little bit right there, and give it a little bit of lightness and there we go and I'm gonna select OK now if you notice I have an inner glow which is right over here it's in your effects tab which if you go to edit full there's an effects tab if you don't see that you could go to the window menu and then go to the effects tab right there and we're gonna click the one that says from the drop down box inner glows and then I want you to pick the second row all the way on to the right hand side and I want you to click the one that says simple and then I want you to hit apply on that. Now it you didn't look like it did very much there so we're gonna double click on where it says FX and then we're gonna pick a different color. Now on this color I wanna go ahead and I wanna put a pink one right there maybe a little bit darker pink and select OK and then we're gonna play with the size so that you can kinda see that. As you can see it's starting to look a little bit too unrealistic. We can take the opacity down, down just a little bit right there and then we can go and select OK. Now you can't see it too well because I have the little marching ants and the reason why I'm doing that is because we still need to do one last thing and that is click on layer one and then we need to go over to our filter and then we need to go to distort and then spherize this at 100 percent because it's giving it the effect that you're looking through the bubble and it's kind of magnifying different areas. So let's go ahead and select OK, which is right there. And last but not least, we're going to hit Command D to get rid of our marching ants. And there we go. We have this nice, beautiful bubble, which is right there. It's kind of got some greens in it and it's kind of got some pinks in it right there. So if you want to do this, you can add another one just by going to your two layers over here and you can just do a command J that even brings it a little bit nicer but you can take that one and you can move it over into a different side right over there hit another command J and there we have it you would have kind of a more pinkish looking um, bubble right on that side right over there now don't forget you always have to do is you have to go in here and you have to hold down the command key click on that well, you actually have to click on this one. <laughs> Command click over here and it will circle the bubble right over here. And then when you're on layer one, you go to filter, distort, and then spherize. And that kind of gives it that magnifying glass look and select OK. And there we have our second bubble. So we have kind of a nice greenish pink one over here. And then we have just a plain pink one over here. Let me go ahead and hit the Command D to get rid of those bubbles. And there we go. I should say get rid of the ants. Hopefully you like this tutorial. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my videos. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a like and pass my links on to your friends. Cheers.